Muslim, we will be on, uh, we, uh, um, we, uh, um, I know many, many, many of you are accessing this from, from, your, uh, from your podcasts while you are cooking or jogging. And so we hope you enjoy this session number 10 of 10, Ha'o Rotz, the wonderful, inspiring Torah of Rav Kook taught by Rav Yitzchak Evan Shaish. We are thrilled to be here with you today for session 10 of 10. God willing, many more to come so we can continue to spread Rav Kook Torah around the world. So uh, Rav Yitzchak, thanks for being here with us. We're thrilled to engage in number, session 10 here with you. Shalom uvracha, Erev Tov, and with your permission, I'd like to bring in by, and, and today is the beginning of Yom HaZikaron HaShoah HaGvora. It started an hour ago officially in Israel with right now it's happening actually the lighting of the six uh, memorial torches in a huge, in the country ceremony at Yad Vashem. And I'd like, and I'm an only child of Holocaust survivors, and it was the reality, Shalom Yehuda, was the reality of the Shoah and the darkness of the Shoah that brought me in my own search of, well, I know where the darkness is, or where, where, where's the light? And in my own search that when I started to learn the Torah of Rav Kook, became very clear that, that this is a an illuminated understanding, an illuminated presentation of the Torah. And the lights of Rav Kook have been interesting me ever since, and I'm happy to be able to share them with you. And in memory of Yom HaZikaron, the Zikron tribe for the Aliyah Neshamot, of all the Neshamot, and for the Tikkun Olam, for the whole Olando, and dedicate our learning to the Tikkun Olama, and if you can join me in Kavana as I light the candle, and I'll put the candle up by the eastern wall. Okay. Okay, so Erev Tov, and thank you very much for joining, and thank you very much for Rabbi Shmuley and the Valley Beit Midrash for, for making this vessel for sharing Torah Rav Kook. And we've been following uh, uh, the challenge, both broad and deep, and the answer is yes, there's Rav Kook is as broad and as deep an understanding of Torah that has ever been uh, presented. And his Torah, so I chose to devote the first five sessions to explaining and reviewing the Yesodot, the five foundations of existence that Rav Kook's uh, main Talmud, the Rav Nazir, and we're reviewing what we've been, what we learned in the things, but he, Rav Nazir, the first hippie of the 20th century, who Rav Kook gave him his most foundational writings, and he sat with them for years, and then he put it, framed it out, and we forgot the Orota Kodesh, the Lights of Holiness. And within that, he presents, he said, there are five principles to foundation of Rav Kook's worldview. One, HaKodesh HaKlali, everything is holy. Everything is holy. And our work is to take the deeper elements of good and holiness that are embodied in everywhere, including the lower and the superficial. And then we will build a new world, a world pervaded by great light. The second principle, a chayut olamit, everything is alive. Teaching us, we and everything is aspiring, longing, 
yearning according to a perfect holiness and girded with beauty, this life of ours is not a meaningless phenomena. Everything is alive, a chayuta olamit. The third principle, ha'achduta kolelet. Everything is one. All existence included in one point, and therefore when we say the Shema, affirming the divine unity we're aspiring, we are wanting to give expression to the unity in the world and humankind among nations in the entire content of existence without any dichotomy between action and theory, reason and imagination. And at that point, even our dichotomies will be experienced through a higher unified, through a higher enlightenment, which recognizes the aspect of all the unity and compatibility of all the different parts. Everything, ha'achduta kolelet, everything is one. And the fourth principle, ha'tov ha'klali, everything is good. Everything in the creation was deemed tov, and then we brought in ra into the experience. And then Rav Cook taught that the divine directive, we are here in order to raise humankind in the world from the depths of Ra, bad to the heights of good. Humankind in the world were destined for this as was the bad itself. It will be elevated, transformed to good. The bad will be elevated as it realizes that its negativity is actually directed towards the universal effort. The bad is there in order to make the good better by transforming the bad into good. <laughs> it's, it's, and the fourth principle, hita'aluta olam, all of this, everything, everything holy, everything alive, everything one, everything good, all of it, hita'aluta olam, everything rising, evolving, elevating, and here we, we quote the Ramchal, who of course Rav Kook is following in the lines of the Ramchal, who was explaining Isaac Luria, Arya, Kadosh. We have to understand the worlds were created in order to rise from their level. Shvirata Kelim, the descent and the breakage, so that we can experience elevation little by little until everything will return to its wholeness. From the beginning of history, the wheel is turning towards one point, hashlemuta acharon, the final complete wholeness and perfection. And that's the context of, of our existence. And it's such a great, everything is holy, everything is alive, everything is one, everything is good and everything is rising, improving, elevating, moving towards perfection and wholeness. And may we be blessed to experience that in our lifetime. And let us say, somebody can say, Amen. Amen. But so that was the first five of the series. And now we've been, um, if anybody wants any, any question or comment, feel free, please. But then we started to review um, the perspective from the teaching of Shir Merubah, which is a teaching found in the Zohar. That the name of God is a fourfold song. It relates to a pasuk in Yecheska, which actually the word kol is found five times. I heard the call of their wings, like the call of mul multitude waters, the call, the voice of Shaddai in its going, and the voice of the multitudes, like the voice of the encampment. The, uh, so it's part of Ezekiel's vision, but there is the, this multitudinous voices, calls, and then um, in the Zohar, it explained that Yud Ke Vav Ke Shir Meruba, fourfold song. Well, it is a Shir Pashut, a simple song. Yud, 
a double song, Shir Kaful, Yud He, Shir Meshulash, Yud He Vav, a, th a threefold song, Shir Meruba, Yud He Vav, a fourfold song. And that structure of the divine unfolding, Yud Yud He, Yud He Vav, Yud He Vav, one plus two plus three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have the, the ten Sfirot, Eser Otiot Shem Havaya, that correspond to the ten Sfirot. And then it says that David Amelech had four types of Nigunim, and within that, from that, he made uh, Eser, ten types of prayers in Sefer Tehillim. And um, so it's that structure of yud heh vav unfolding into the tree of life of the Eser Sfirot, the Zohar is, is um, pointing out. Okay, and then in the Tikkunim, in the later Zoharic writings, it says there can, will come a time in the future, Israel will overcome, evil will be negated, Amalek will be erased from the world, and then we will have a, a shir pashut, shir kaful, shir meshulash, or shir meruba. We will have a simple double, triple, fourfold song that's all connected with the name Havaya, the name Yud He Vav He Sheyelech Riotia Veitgale Yoter Viotir. There will come to be more manifested, discovered, known in the world. And that's from the Tikkunim, Zoharic writings. And then Rav Cook sat down. This is in COVID-7. He wrote this in Switzerland. World War I is swirling around him. And he's learning with his son most of the day and writing. Probably went through Shas a few times and so on. And one day he sat and wrote this poem, which we've been delving into and its implications. And today we're going to read the final part of the poem and continue the, the presentation. But let's enter the poem again, the fourfold song, where Rav Cook explains Yeshu Hushar Shirat Nafsho. There is the place where we're singing the song of our. Our own being, in ourselves we find everything. Our full spiritual section, Veyeshu Husham Shirata Uma, in our own nation, we emerge out of the circle of our individual self that we don't find it broad enough, and not sitting on an idealistic basis. We aspire for greater heights. And then we cleave with a love in Klalutash of Knesset Israel, with the entirety of the community of Israel. And with the Israel, we sing her songs, we suffer in her sufferings and take delight in her hopes. It's so much beautiful in the Hebrew. But Ima, who shar et shirea meitzar betzarotea vemisht ashea betikvotea. And we're thinking noble th thoughts and pure thoughts, Israel, and we're probing with love and wisdom of heart our inner spiritual essence. We're singing the song of Israel. And then our spirit grows even broader and goes beyond the boundary of Israel, Lashir et Shirata Adam, to sing the song of humankind. Our spirit goes forth and expands into the genius of all humankind and the divine, the splendor of the divine image, the Tselem Elohim that every human being has. We aspire for our collective destiny and we look forward to our highest wholeness and peacefulness of all humankind, not only Israel, we're the all humankind. And from this source of life, we draw our investigations, our studies, 
our aspirations and our visions. The universalist within us, the, and then, yesh od mizele mala, in which we can go even higher and, and broader and we unite with all existence. Mit ached im kola yekum, im kola briot ve im kola olamim. Unite with all the creatures and all the worlds and all of existence. Ve im kulam omer shiran. With all of them, we sing, speak her song. And if we sing this song, and we are guaranteed a share in the world to come. We will create the world to come. And here is the, um, now I'm gonna to switch to this text. Wait a minute. Okay. The and then there is that place within us in which we rise with all these songs together in one ensemble. Kulam notnimet koloteam. Each, all of us are giving our voices. Our call is coming forth. Kulam yachad man imim et zimrehem. All together we, we blend our harmonies. We join our, we, yeah, we join our voices, but, but it, we make naim, our zemer. We harmonize together. V'ze noten lezed leshed v'chaim. And we give to each other vitality and, and life. Kol sason v'kol simcha. Call songs of joy and songs of celebration, call tzahala ve call rina, jubilation and gladness, call chedva ve call kedusha, songs of ecstasy, songs of holiness. Shirat hanefesh, shirat ha'uma, shirat ha'adam, shirat ha'olam, the song of our being, the song of human of our nation, the song of humankind, the song of existence. They all together join kulan yachad mit mazgot bekirbo bechol etu bechol sha'a. Join together in our being at every moment in every hour. Shirat El, this is the song of El. Shirat Israel. This is the song of Israel. In its full authenticity and greatness, in all its strength and splendor, is in all its full authenticity and greatness. And then he completes the poem, Israel, Shir El. Israel is the song of El. Shir Pashut, a simple song. Shir Kaful, a double song. Shir Meshulash, a triple song. Shir Meruba, a fourfold song. Shir Hashirim, Asher Lishlomo, Lemelech, Shir Hashalom Shalo, quoting Shir Hashirim, the song of songs of Shlomo, but of, Shalm, of Shlemut, the song with whom is Shalom, with whom is Shlemut. And when we are able to, as Israel to sing Shir El, to sing Shir Pashut, Shir Kaful, Shir Meshulash, Shir Merubah, then we'll be singing the, the Shir Hashirim, Asher the Shlomo, the Melech Shalom Shalom. May we be blessed to sing the song, Bimei Rabbi Amenu and Nomar Amen. <sighs> So that's a review of what we've been, what we covered in the in the upper the, these ten sessions, and I thank you for this opportunity to. If anybody wants to ask any question or anything about this section, uh, this would be a good moment, and where the question now.
is what we're left with. Say to us, what are we to take and how are we to apply everything into, into our experience, into our understanding, into our behavior? And 10 years ago, a very extraordinary book appeared that, uh, and I'm gonna stop the sharing for a second. 10 years ago, in 1902, Rav Cook knew he was coming to Israel. He didn't he came to Israel in 1904. He sat down and he wrote the single longest book that he ever wrote in his life. And the book was then put away. And the first time it was published was in 10 years ago. It's entitled Le Nevuche Hador, To the Confused of the Generation, and it's also the subtitled More Nebuchima Chadash, The New Guide to the Perplexed. And it's, it wasn't even heard about until it was actually published and came into, into the public domain 10 years ago. And what I'd like to do is, um, spend the rest of the time is to bring it I think I will spend uh, I want to read some selections from it and then we'll conclude with a with a piece of poetry from Ruff Cook so I want to introduce you to the new guide to the perplexed which some of us some of us who are in this circle are actually are learning it daily and everybody is invited to join us but um, and I'll go back and forth. How much time do you have? I'll make sure we have. Okay. It's called Le Nevuche Hador to the Confused of the Generation. It begins Shahadam Nivra Betselem Elohim Zehu Yesoda Torah. That the human was created in the image of God. This is the foundation of the Torah, the too small, too large. Sheha Adam Nivra Betzele Melokim Zehu Yesod HaTorah. That the human is created in the image of God. This is the entire foundation of the Torah. And what does it mean to be created Betzele Melokim? Ikar HaTzelem Hu HaChofesh HaGamor. The main essence of our being in the image of the divine is the complete freedom. Is that we are beings of chofesh gamur, complete freedom, masters of choice. And if it were not for this choice, there would be no place for the Torah, as the Rambam says in Ilchot Tshuva, Bechira hi yesod ha-Torah b'ma'aseh. The foundation of the Torah in action is the principle of, of choice, free choice. Ve'hayediyah, she'ha'adam hu asui b'tzelem elokim, the knowledge that a person is created in the image of God. This teaches us the same complete freedom that is with the divine presence, but the principle that the human is created in the image of, of the creator is the foundational principle of the entire Torah and all the actions that are connected with it. That is the entire Torah is built on the reality That's the first paragraph of the new guide to the perplexed. And he says, and Mishalibo Lev Adam Be'emet, and someone whose heart is truly a human heart and comprehends the splendorous freedom 
that is at the root of our existence, right? I can move my, I can go do this, I can do that, I can at any particular moment move in any direction I choose. We may not make many choices, that doesn't mean we don't have them. Ben and we can see with the eye of our intellect. How the entire structure, the entire whole human structure, is moving forth only for the purpose to bring the human being to his complete freedom. The entire, and so that's why we, we have machines now that we don't have to do this and this. We're released from all that, all the technological developments, everything in human history is moving to bring us to our complete freedom. And then we should have no doubt whatsoever that this is the highest aspect of wholeness, this freedom, and as Tzalem Elohim. And that's the, yeah. So that in paragraph, in chapter five, we're skipping. Chazal said, uh, to really be able to speak about the power of the creation to flesh and blood, it's not really possible. So it categorized it in three words. The, in the beginning, Elohim created. To cover the whole the whole area, ukvar bi eruha mekubalim bi yichud, and the the, Kabbal, the Kabbalists have already clarified the samchu gamken al divrei midrash. They also relied on the midrash shahaya kadosh baruch hu bone olamot vemachrivan that as the process of creation, God built worlds and destroyed them. So the Kabbalah, the Kabbalah has come to the understanding that there have been a number of epochs in creation to the point that we came to, to this state of where we are now. But but the whole we really, 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 really have to understand is ki hatzedek vehayosher haniten beyad haadam bepriruto that the choice of making righteousness, justice, integrity, the direct, the right path, the path of straightness is given to a human being to choose and nimtza bechlal kochota metziot. It's found in all the energies, all the powers of existence. Kol hadrachim atzrichim lahashlamato. All the, what, all the matters, directions that are necessary in order to bring our choice to Shlemut. The world is designed to respond to our choices. And if we make the choice for Shlemut, the world has within it klal akochot, no disease, no poisonous anything, or whatever it is. That's what he's saying. The world doesn't have to be the way it is in terms of the incompletion and the suffering of life. But it all depends on tzedek ve'yosher, that the human action is on the path of tzedek ve'yosher, justice and integrity. The dark 
ערכי ההשלמה של הצדק האנושי and the paths to the fulfillment of human הם כערך תכלית עליון is the highest purpose להמציאות for this reality שהולך ונבנה על פי כל סדרי חיים that is being built through all the structures of life והההליכות ההיסטוריה הכוללת and in all the historical processes ושל ישראל בייחוד and especially through the history of Israel דרכי ההשלמה של הצדק האנושי the bringing to fulfillment the, the complete justice throughout all humanity That's the purpose, the highest purpose of reality, and, and that's what we do. Perfection of human morality is the higher end goal of all existence. Perfection of human morality is the highest end goal of all existence. That's what it's about. Torat Israel. שאיפתה היא, this is chapter 8, תורת ישראל, the Torah of Israel, שאיפתה היא רק להגיע אל עוצם התכלית של שלמות כל האנושות. The Torah of Israel, its aspiration is only to reach this highest purpose of the fulfillment, the perfection of humankind. of humanity. והיא מוכנה לזה בכל מכשיריה. And we are ready for this, we are prepared for this through all our tools. בין במכשיריה המוסריים, our ethical tools, בין המעשים, our practical, actual tools, בין ההיסטוריים, or our historical tools from what we've learned through history. But the Torah wants us to perf- bring about the perfection of humanity, and that's what it's really all about. Now, what does perfection mean? What does it mean to be perfect or shalem in Hebrew or whole? So in chapter 24, One of the most remarkable chapters, if I can only show people one chapter in this book, this is the chapter I, I show them, as well as the first paragraph. Okay. Chamisha, there are five basic powers. Five basic forces that it is necessary that we take care of them, we be, we be careful, that these powers will be whole in the life of the collective and the individual. The Az Yimtzabaem Akoach Hamartim and then we will have the proper power to push away any disease or any wound, keep away damage, and we can flower life in the proper way. These are the five kohot aklalim. Ha'echad. בריאות הגוף והנפש, health of body and spirit. נפש is like psyche. It's the נפש is the soul within the body, the consciousness within the body. בתור בעל חיים שלם, in our form as a, a human creature, as a complete human creature, ועליז בחיים, who is joyful in life. So we need to be 
it physically and psychologically and, and an active and joyous of life. The second, akohota enoshiim, our human capabilities, our human talents, our human strengths, yifotchu kerau, should be developed properly. What are they? Rikshei ha'inugim aruchaniim, the feelings of spiritual delight, hayofi, appreciation of beauty, hashira, song and poetry, hadimayon habari. A healthy imagination. Ubichlalam and among all these power enoshim, kohota enoshim, tchunata midot, developing our qualities, hawuyot liyot niimot bechavua, that make us be able to live well in society with the principle. Derech Eretz, Kadmale Torah, right? And Pirkei Avot, the Derech Eretz is, precedes the proper human behavior, precedes the statutes of the Torah. So that's the second level we have to develop. The third, we have to develop our national feeling, our feeling towards our nation needs to be developed Call Ktorcho as much as is necessary. Call Echad Vechad the Fi Erech Umatovitz. Each one according to its value. If your nation is a, is a crazy nation of, of murderers and stuff, well, we don't, you know, we don't want to help that. Tivav Mamada. So yet each one depending on where it's at. But we need to be Libo El Vinafsho Margeshet. Our heart needs to be awakened, our soul feeling. Be chush amitz ubari etatov laamo that we want with with a strong courage. Uh, um, the well-being of our nation. Whichever nation you're a part of, if you're a Tibetan, so on and so forth, and wanting with a living life, the living love. The TV, the natural living love, la hagdil to grow its value and its success. We need, we want the the well-being of our leum. And then the fourth, pituach haregeshadati, developing our our religious sensitivity, which is a regesh nisgav natua benefesh adam miyotzer nishmato, which is a a, a, a sensitivity, a lofty feeling that's planted in the spirit by the creator of our soul. So that that we will embed into our beings the proper in a proper relationship that we are the creation to its creator, right? There, that's the relationship, and, and that needs to be. And part of that relationship, what makes it so important with that, we, with this pituach aregesh adati, part of that, who chobek bezrua yesodo, et kol yesodot hachaim, the hamusar haklali vaprati, and then we embrace with all our being the foundations, all the foundations of uh, of life, the of well-being of life, and of ethics. Kol yesodot hachaim, the hamusar haklali, all the foundations of life and the universal ethic, the aprati, and the individual ethic. It means that we 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 a regish that is that we our dedication is to musar uh, klali to a universal ethic. That's what as a we as cre as creation of our creator, our our responsibility, our opportunity is to uh, act as. As God created everything good, we act good 
and then the Garden of Eden, we, 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 we we're back in it. And then the fifth level that we have to develop is pituach seichel. We have to develop seichel. Seichel is a hard word to understand. Consciousness, or the intellect is one way, but pituach seichel. Data olam v'metziut, develop our knowledge of the world and of reality. Achachmota iniyot, the speculative, investigative <clears throat> uh, sciences, hamasiyot, the, the practical wisdoms, the technological, the hamufshatot, and the abstract, the philosophical. We need to develop the speculative, practical, and abstract philosophic. Ad, asher yachush gam tzorech TV to the point that then we will feel a natural desire, a natural need. Liot mit aneg al hadar ha to derive joy from the splendor of the divine wisdom. Hamufshetet, the expanded abstract wisdom. Hamedaberet al Elohut which is speaking about godliness and relates to divinity, and all the things that are dependent upon this. And these are the five that we have to develop. We have to develop health of body and psyche, our human qualities, our national uh, feelings, our religious, spiritual feelings, and our consciousness. And every single human being, I'll save a little time here and, and um, we'll read this part in English, but every person has a natural disposition to one of these, each one of us according to our nature. However, health, health will not be found. It's only when all these will be properly balanced. One to the other. And it's not when each one is trying to overtake the boundary of the other of the other in order to make themselves greater. Each of these areas needs to integrate and harmonize. Health will only be found when all of these powers are in a proper balance. And in order to restore equilibrium, we can either make the large, the strong, weaker, or the he says, you know, it's much better to increase the weaker forces rather than diminishing the the more powerful. Because diminishing, you're diminishing the divine life, whether we're talking on the individual life or the national life, and that's the the problem is in human society is when we take for solution only one of these forces or a few of them, but not all of them. We think, no, no, this is, what, this is what's most important and the other ones are not. And that's not gonna work because they're, they're all fighting against each other. As long as these forces are on breakage will not be repaired and many disputes will emerge when we destroy the equilibrium, don't balance everything that's necessary in order to assemble the wealth of life. Kama meniyot drushot liyot mikol echad miyem beharkavat masechet hachayim. We need to properly balance all the different pieces in order to be able to, to put together the whole web of life in, in the proper way. And, and um, yeah, and that's a little bit out of this extraordinary 57 chapter book, which it's, it's um, the speculation on why it wasn't published 
the the real answer might be more it was much of it was much too radical for the time and some of it's 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 much more for our time and it, it would have freaked too many people out and so i think that's why they put it away um I, I didn't go into the radical things here. I went into the basic things, but there's some very radical things here about the nature of Judaism and the world. Um, okay, so so um, I, I'm. If anybody wants to learn, continue learning this book. We where we have it every day. We're learning together. Um, Seven o'clock Jerusalem time, which was like two hours ago. New Year, 12 o'clock, I think it's nine o'clock Western time. Um, so thank you very much. And what I'd like to end with is a, um, a poem. When I stood in my own path with Rav Cook, I uh, came to, to know of his poetry. And I came to understood understand that he wrote from different levels of his experience. But when he was in Olam HaAtzilut, in his most expanded, he wrote poetry. It came forth in poetry. And he wrote, I mean, all his writing is poetic. Even his halachic writing is poetic. Um, but his poetry is mamash Torah Atzilut. So with your permission, and also we have, I have music of all this poetry and, and and you, you're welcome to, to check it out on our website and so forth. But, um, okay, so this poem is called Tchia, Renewal. Hav li hav, shavive or, rav li rav, machashake bor. Give me, give me, rays of light, enough for me, enough, these pits of darkness. Hava li shai, rayonei tohar, Daily die, ma'afele sohar. Give me the gift of purity of thought. Enough for me, enough. These prisons of confusion. Tnali tna, gvurat chefetz, o shitlina kadwe nefetz. Gift me, gift me with the power of desire. Extend to me balls of fire. Ana pets bahem tirotu migdalim vishokne bahem avale avalim. I'll explode with them the false towers and structures and the vanity of vanities that dwell within. Ekra dro lefive iti, blili shmor yeni vechaviti. I call for liberation for my words and my pen without keeping my wine in its barrel. Uvli fachad cherdat avadim, nishta ayachad dvarim achadim. Without fear, the anxiety of the enslaved, we will announce together words and matters of unity, uniqueness, and unification. Vahadvarim kechitzim, yikluu matratam, velachim anitzim, yagidu rish atam works and to our brothers and sisters struggling speak of our wrongdoing. Lehit romem mi flagot, le godel am, le archiva sagot, ke mechaveyam, to raise ourselves beyond the divisions, beyond the parties. Mi flagot is the Hebrew word for political parties. And now the Arab community. Um, is going to are they? They have they also have thirty four parties running in the, in the Palestinian areas ter uh, elections, and we have thirty parties running. I don't know in the fifth election, but the hitromem mi flagot. We have to raise ourselves be beyond all these parties. Le godel am to grow for the greatness of the people, the nation. To expand our consciousness as broad as the ocean. To shake the dust from the lands of our exile that are cleaving to our sickly hearts. To 
בכוחן לאל. To understand the principle, the power of the one. לדאוג לנשמה, לנשמת האומה, שנהפכה לשממה בהגלותה בתחומה. To be concerned for the soul, the soul of our nation, of our people, turned over desolate in its exile from home. לעורר החיים בתחיית העם, בארץ ובשמיים, באשר הם שם. To awaken life for the renewal of the nation in the earth and in the heavens as they are there. לעורר החיים לתחיית העם. להתרומם מפלגות לגודל עם, להרחיב ההשגות כמרחב הים. To raise ourselves beyond all the divisions for the greatness of the people, to expand our consciousness as broad as the... לעורר החיים לתחיית העם בארץ ובשמיים באשר הם שם, to awaken life for the renewal of the nation on the earth and the heavens as they are there. לעורר, לעורר, לעורר החיים. And may we be blessed to truly awaken life and bring great blessing into the world and, and bring the blessing of Rav Cook's illuminations and, and Torah teachings into the world, into the, the, the whole world, because the whole world desperate needs light. So, le'orer ha'chaim, and may we be merit to do so in our lifetime immediately, and let us join Roberta Venomar. Amen. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, nice. any comments or comments. Feel free. This is, we have a few minutes. I think that I heard a song that Shlomo Katz wrote to the Orer HaChayim. I'm not sure if I did or not, but I thought I heard him sing at Rabbi Moshe Weinberger's shul, he and his brother together. It could be, it has become something that the whole shul is singing over there now. I'll yeah, have to look and see if There are a number of Rav Cook songs that are out in the world and all over, thank God. Wow. I don't think I know them. I would love to know them. <laughs> If we, could, if we could find the ones that you have there on the website. Me too. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, have, I have all of mine. Here, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll give you the link to. Oh, that would be great. My CD. I do that here, chat. I'll so, put it on right now. Oh, by the way, yeah. this is an article. Am I still sharing? This is an article about Yom HaShoah and Rav Cook that I want to invite people to read. Am I still sharing? No, I'm not. Let me share screen for a moment. This is an article on um, Rav Cook, the sound of the monster shofar in uh, memory of Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaShoah. And it's what Rav Cook said about Hitler. And um, and I'll, I'll, I put the link, I actually put the link in our chat already of this, of this meeting. And now I will um, just find in a moment the CD, but I wish I had it right here. Just give me a second, but uh, here it is. Okay, so in the chat to everybody, to everyone, 
Here is the Rav Cook jazz spoken word Hebrew English. Wow. With Greg Wall's later, Rabbi Greg Wall's later prophets. And wow. When I first saw Rabbi Greg Wall play, I felt like I was watching John Coltrane. And, and it, it was true. True. So, and it's anyways, there's a lot of Rav Cook music coming out now. I, the only, the only, I, I, I started it earlier, but here in Israel, some of the big music stars have put out great, great Rav Cook pieces, but really? nobody's doing it in jazz, spoken word, rap. Um, okay, any other questions, please? Are, are there any speeches that Rav Cook question. gave yes, that Robert, are recorded? Are there any recorded speeches that he gave, Rav Cook? Hardly any, no. So we don't really know his speaking voice so well then. No. Oh, what a shame. Rav Yitzchak. Okay, so Rabbi Shmuley. Rav Yitzchak, this has been such a remarkable series that people around the world are tapping into. We are so grateful for your time and, uh, and scholarship and for the amazing center you're building and uh, have learned so much from you. And uh, really it's such a deep, deep honor that Valley Beit Midrash should be able to learn from you. We hope to continue these conversations and this learning together. We thank all of you who have joined us near and far in learning this Torah. And uh, I pray that the, the Torah of Rav Cook will continue to illuminate our path forward for, uh, for, for, uh, for many, many years to come uh, towards Geula. So thank oh, you, Rabbi Yitzchak, and thank oh, you, man. everyone. And we wish everyone so much bracha and hatzlacha in our continued journeys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shalom, shalom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Rabbi Yitzchak. Thank you very much. This was awesome. Shalom. Just wonderful. Oh. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. This is such an unusual medium because I'm used to, like, you know, the living back and forth. So I, I, but I'm glad pe people are hearing it inside. Um, yeah, look, Ruff Cook is the most enlightened person in recent human history, if maybe in a long time. So it's worth, uh, it's worth learning. And because it's of Torah, right? It's not like he's making it up. This is, this is, this is the deepest parshanut of Torah that comes, you know, so it's, it's actually extraordinary Torah parshanut. So we're blessed. All right, so signing off and to watch the depressing documentaries. They, they have special documentaries on Israel now. The documentary they're having now is on the, the very, the unknown partisan, the last partisan. And